Today, we take it to the streets with a marketing tactic that we employed for a pizza restaurant back in my early marketing days when I was an account executive at WGRR, the oldies radio station in Cincinnati. And I've not done this since, and I really want to. My goal is to help to help restaurant owners finally get to where they want to go. But more than that, my goal is to find entrepreneurs within that segment that actually know what it means to hustle. That's my goal. Come on the journey with me. Restaurant Marketing Secrets, episode 201. I'm your host, Matt Plapp, and we are brought to you by America's Best Restaurants. America's Best Restaurants is on a path to help you, independent restaurant owners, find more frequent customers. Why? Because infrequent customers only help you cover your bills. You need to have more frequency, loyalty out of your customers so that you can create more profit, larger sales, and find what you want in life, which wasn't a job at a restaurant. It's to employ and lead a team that's making an impact on your community. Let's talk about a way you can do that in today's podcast. So back when I sold radio advertising, I sold for WGRR from 1999 to 2003. Ironically, at the exact time, I also opened and operated a boat and RV dealership with my brother and father. So I was was doing two things. I was legit working 6.30 to 7 a.m. till 11 o'clock at night, seven days a week. And I don't know where this came from. I'm assuming it came from my mom and dad being badass entrepreneurs and grassroots marketers. But somewhere in my brain was embedded a creative bug when it came to marketing. And I took that into my radio world. And so what was unique about me when I sold radio advertising was that I wasn't the radio advertising rep that was just selling you spots. And I don't know exactly how I got to the point where I wasn't that person because nine out of 10 people that I sold with and against were that person. And I've got a lot of stories I can tell you about it. And this is the first one that I'm going to bring up because I don't know how I got this idea. And I actually drove by this street the other day where we launched this and it triggered this memory because it's right near my house now, ironically. So one of the clients I had assigned to me back in the day was Snappy Tomato Pizza. Snap, Snappy Tomato Pizza. There was so much flavor in a snap. And they also had snap, snappy cicada pizza, if you know the cicadas. There were some funny jingles they had back in the day. But it's a local pizza brand that I don't eat out a whole lot nowadays. I don't know why. I don't think there's you know, there's a couple near my house, but it just never has hit us as our favorite pizza, I guess. I couldn't tell you. It's good pizza. But it's been around for a while. And when I was in radio, they were traditionally, and I don't know if they are now or still this way, but traditionally they were a northern Kentucky pizza company. And we were a, obviously a Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky, Southern Indiana radio station. So there was a lot of businesses that didn't buy our commercials because they would be wasting the majority of the reach across the river in Ohio. Well, at some point I got in front of Snappy Tomato Pizza. The guy's name was Brett Whitty. And Brett was the marketing director. Never forget, they were in the lower level of a gas station because the company that owned it also owned a bunch of BP gas stations. And they were in that lower level and Brett and I would meet there. Well, I met Brett. I lived in Erlanger. Their office was on Turfway between Erlanger and Florence. And I remember meeting with him and talking about radio. He's like, Matt, we we have no use for radio, for WGR. They bought some stuff, but not a ton. And they weren't buying deep enough that they were going to get to me. And But he was open to ideas. And so I must have asked the question at some point. Don't ask me how I got to this point because I don't have that good of a memory. But I must have asked some questions to identify some opportunities, some weaknesses. And he had brought up the conversation about a restaurant, one of their locations, that was off the Richwood exit, which I get gas at all the time because my personal trainer I have, Jared, is across the street from this place. But there's a Snappy Tomato Pizza there, and I don't know if it's the same one that was there back then because that was a long time ago, but there was a Snappy Tomato Pizza in a gas station, which it probably is because there's (laughs) it's a BP and of Snappy, and it was you know their 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 avatar, I guess, that were their ideal location, you could say. And so he had talked about how that restaurant was struggling. And somehow we got to the conversation of they weren't getting the orders they thought they should get 
from the houses in that golden mile that a lot of you restaurants go after. That mile around your restaurant, there's a lot of houses. He's right next to a subdivision called Triple Crown. Across the street, there's a couple streets with houses, uh, a lot of houses. And so we had talked about that. And I said, well, let me let me go back to the radio station. Let me look at what our station's got in our repertoire that would that would make sense for this. And I'll come back to you. We interrupt your program for a brief announcement from our sponsor. Hey, it's Matt. And yeah, that was me. But guess what? We don't have any sponsors. It's just us, America's Best Restaurants. We don't take money for our podcast. We don't sell sponsorships. We don't have product placements. It's just me giving you advice that can help your restaurant get to the next level. But what I would love for you to do is check out what America's Best Restaurants is doing at americasbestrestaurants.com. Check out our ABR Roadshow on the Get Featured tab. Or check out what we're doing under Restaurant Marketing and Help that can help you, independent restaurants, take the next step in your marketing. Now back to the podcast. So I recall going back to the station and what the majority of the people in our business did, which is, I guess, maybe what they were trained to do, is they would go back and they would put together a, a BS advertising campaign with, okay, we're going we're gonna to get you 20 spots for $4,000 a month. You'll be on 20 spots a week, two weeks a month. We'll get you some new sponsorships. And that was it. Everybody, I mean, literally, I saw the presentations go out the office when – as our comp our boat dealership grew, people started calling on my company, which was funny because I was selling radio and getting presented to radio advertising opportunities. And then, as that company grew, I you know, we were spending three hundred grand a year, so I saw radio advertising pitches. And then, as I built this company from 08 to fifteen, we handled, gosh, four three four million dollars in advertising spend for our clients. And so I have bought and sold about everything you can possibly imagine in media. And every pitch is almost always the same. Now, again, I don't know where this creative juice in my mind came from for some of these things, but I was traditionally creating off-the-wall promotions. So I remember coming back to the station and thinking, okay, they don't, they don't need radio. They were, I think they were a big WEBN buyer back then, I believe. WEBN and Fox. I could never get the business away from them. And we had WGRR, Q102, Channel Z, and what was the other station? B105. But I could never get it away from them. And so I, I remember going back to the station, coming up with an idea. And the idea I did, I went went back to Brett and I said, okay, so you said that your sales were hurting this store, these, you know, this around the restaurant. I've got an idea for you. We are going to create some short commercials, like five to ten second commercials, that are going to promote that if you, you know, promote Snappy Tomato Pizza. And if you live in certain neighborhoods, look out for the Snappy Tomato Street team. And at this point, he's like, what's the Snappy Tomato Street team? I'm like, I'll get to that next. Because we're bringing pizza to your house for free. And the next next part of it was okay. Me personally, because Matt Plapp actually did this. Where And I knew, all I knew, it just triggered. I knew where this came from also. I remember when I'm sitting there, he had this van parked out front. They had a white, one of those like Ford vans, Econoline vans, solid white, Snappy Tomato on the side. And I remember asking at the original meeting what the van was all about. And he's like, oh, we bought it for marketing, but we never really use it. It just sits here. And it does deliveries of stores here and there, but it doesn't really get used. That would be cool if we could use it. Now I remember where it came from. This is the first time I've told this story in a long time. And so I remember saying, okay, you got the van out there. And they had this snappy outfit because I had seen it before where the person was a giant, like, tomato head snappy, you know, those costumes that if you wear in July in the <laughs> this Kentucky heat you get melted in. But I had this idea. I said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to coordinate a street team. Our radio station has employees that do this, which I don't know if we did or not. I think I made that up because I was one of them. I was an advertising sales executive. I was paid commissions on what I sold. I wasn't paid hourly. I didn't have a salary. I was 100% commission. And I sure as hell didn't get paid to do street team stuff. But I said, what we're going to do is we're going to take the Snappy Tomato van. We're going to go to the streets around here. We're going to put flyers on their doors, letting them know to be outside at this day, this time. And I picked days and times where I envisioned people would be out. And I didn't know if this would work, to be quite honest with you, but it was an idea. I said, we're going to go to these streets. We're going to pass out 100 flyers. We're going to put 100 flyers on doors. And we're going to let them know. I think we did it on a Tuesday. And we said, hey, Thursday, 5 o'clock, we're going to be back on your street giving out free pizzas from Snappy Tomato Pizza just to thank you for being a great neighbor where your local neighborhood place, Snappy Tomato, 
Richwood. This is Richwood, Kentucky. We're off the exit by called Triple Crown Subdivision. So we did this. And the goal game plan was to one day tape flyers to the doors. Next, you know, two days later, bring pizzas back. And on those pizzas, have coupons and just say, hey, thanks for being a great customer. Because he had also told me in this time, and all this is coming back again. So if I'm kind of rehashing this, I apologize. But I literally have not told this story in, I would imagine, 10 or 15 years. But I remember having a conversation with him, him like telling me how inexpensive the cost of a pizza was versus what it sold for. And so there was a hell of a lot of margin. I want to say the pizza we gave out was $1.28 was his actual food cost. And if you follow David Scott Peters, you should always have accurate, up-to-date recipe costing cards. So apparently, Brett had those. So he told me $1.20. I remember thinking like, okay, that's no big deal. We give out 100 pizzas. It's $125. Who, who cares? Like that, the payout is much bigger because you're telling me the people on these streets near your restaurant are not ordering pizza. If I can get impact them in a different way and get them to order pizza, in the future, it'll cover itself. And so I remember pulling up on that van. I, I mean, I was the one driving. I drove the van. And we had a couple of interns from the radio station because that was one thing we had interns at all four stations that did all these promotional stuff, the live remotes. And I don't remember what we sold it for, but it was a package where we said, hey, we're going to do this on, you know, over the next two months. It was like a test. Next two months, we're going to hit a street every week. We're going to do eight weeks, and then we're going to see how it happens. We pull up, and I'm thinking, I got a whole van full of pizzas. I remember thinking, like, oh, shit, this is going to be weird. We're going to knock on the doors, give them their pizzas. Like, who's going to be home? How's it going to work? And I'll never forget, no shit. I pull up and I look to the right as I'm getting ready to turn right. The yards are filled with people. Every single yard, might be exaggerating, but pretty much all of them, had a kid and a parent out front waiting for the damn pizza. We went through those pizzas like that. It was done. There was no knocking on doors. They were in their yards. Gave out every pizza within about 10 minutes. It was insane. And guess what happened? About two weeks later, Brett calls me. He's like, Matt, it's working. The pizza orders are flying in from those streets because their point of sale could track where the sales came from, which makes sense. And this is this is back in like 2000-ish. Nowadays, you could you know <laughs> think what we could do with this. But I remember we ended up doing it. We did it for about a year where we would go to these stores. Now, they didn't have a big enough footprint to do it all the time, and that ended up creating a relationship. They ended up becoming an advertising client of the radio station, and we built a long relationship. And I actually saw Brett recently. I think his kid goes to my same high, my son's high school, if I remember, but he's in the area still. Uh, I want to say works in the works in the business where he helps the gas stations, I think, in the region. But it was cool to see because it was complete positive attribution to our promotion. This street had, because he had data, like this street has had eight orders in 30 days. How in the, there's like 100 houses on it. We're across the street. Across the street. It should have a lot more. Well, then the next month, that street had 50 orders. Okay. And so we started doing that. So I tell you this story because there's something out there like that for you and your restaurant that you're not thinking about it. I call them Blue Ocean Restaurant Marketing Ideas. It's from a book called The Blue Ocean Strategy. There's blue ocean, there's red ocean. The red ocean is what everybody else is doing. They're buying lame coupons and lame coupon magazines. They're posting a Facebook post. They're boosting it for $10. There's a lot of tactics. Everybody's, they're all doing the same things. At some point, you've got to get into a different lane. You've got to go to the blue ocean. The red ocean is red water and choppy because it's bloody because the sharks are feeding on the same carcass, meaning all of the restaurants are going up to the same customer, the same bandwidth. The blue ocean is smooth sailing and crystal blue water because there's no sharks in the water. Nobody is there. I can promise you there's not a pizza restaurant in northern Kentucky taking pizzas to houses for free and saying thank you and then tracking the results. And I guarantee it would work. So there you go. That's all I got. I'm out. Episode 201 in the books, the Pizza Street Team marketing promo. I'll see you next episode. So as you know, I don't charge for my content. We don't have sponsors. We don't have product placement in here. But what I want your help with is spreading the word. 
If you're finding value here, do me a favor. Share this on your social media. Share an episode with something that made sense to you that's relevant to your restaurant that you got value from and tag Matt Plapp and America's Best Restaurants. Also, go to America's Best Restaurants on Facebook and on Google and leave us a review. Let us know the impact we've had on your restaurant with our roadshow, with our marketing help, or with our podcast. And last but not least, if you want to take the next step and help me out a lot and help us out a lot, text me a testimonial, 859-743-2408. That's my cell. A selfie video would be awesome about the impact this content or our company is having on your independent restaurant. But worst case scenario, just a few kind words. The way we can help lift this industry up is to help get content like this to more independent restaurant owners. And you are the key to spreading the word. I appreciate your support. Have an amazing day.